Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our viewers from all over the, the world. My name is Astrid Solomonian. I am the Technical Assistance Officer of the World Trade Organization Government Procurement and Competition Policy Group. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the first event of celebrations devoted to the dual anniversary of the GPA. And why dual? Because this year marks 40 years since the entry into force of the first Tokyo Round Code that was regulating government procurement issues. And this is also uh, 25 years since the entry into force of the WTO Agreement on Government Procurement, or put it simply GPA. In order to mark these anniversaries, our group is currently organizing several panel discussions on different elements of the GPA, the first of which, actually this one, is going to concentrate on the experiences of selected GPA parties that have joined the agreement not so long ago. So today we will try to see how are these GPA parties assessing their accession so far? Did the results surpass or maybe fall short of expectations? And it is our hope that this panel discussion will also be very useful for the WTO members that are considering or are already at the stages of acceding to the GPA. And in order to have a variety of views from the GPA parties from different regions of the world, we invited distinguished panelists from New Zealand that joined the GPA in 2015. Welcome, Ms. Karen English. Uh, Karen is Director, International Procurement and Trade, New Zealand Government Procurement, Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. She's responsible for New Zealand's international commitment and engagement relating to government procurement. This includes leading on New Zealand's participation in the GPA, supporting the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade with the negotiations of government procurement commitment in free trade agreements and cooperation activities, and ensuring that New Zealand's government procurement and practice continues to be strongly aligned with internationally recognized best practice. Our next panelist is from Chinese Taipei that joined the GPA in 2009, Mr. Shan Yu Chen. He is a section chief of the Department of Planning, the Public Construction Commission of Chinese Taipei. He is a senior expert in government policies and the implementation of the GPA in Chinese Taipei. He was a member of the delegation of Chinese Taipei in the GPA renegotiations and often leads his delegation in participating in activities of the WTO Committee on Government Procurement. And our third panelist is from Ukraine that joined the GPA in 2016, Ms. Oksana Kamianetska, uh, who is currently occupying the position of Head of International Activities at the Public Procurement Department of the Ministry of Economy of Ukraine. She is responsible for advancing, approximating and promoting the Ukrainian government procurement policy globally, including at the GPA. Her duties also include monitoring and supporting the implementation of Ukraine's obligations under the association agreement with the European Union and facilitating cooperation with other international stakeholders like the World Bank, European Commission, OECD, EBRD, Sigma, etc. So thank you to all of our panelists for joining in today and for your interest. Without any further ado, and in the interest of time, I would like to give the floor to you for very short opening remarks, essentially elaborating on the initial considerations that led you and your economies to exit to the GPA in the first place. So if I may suggest uh, New Zealand to go first, followed by Chinese Taipei and Ukraine. Karen, thank you, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Ashtik, first for the um, the introduction and also thank you very much for the opportunity to share New Zealand's experience of accession to the GPA for this knowledge series. New Zealand, as you may know, has long been a supporter of the multilateral rules based trading system and for us GPA membership has been a very positive experience overall. 
I'd like to start with perhaps some facts. New Zealand joined the WTO when it was created. We became an observer to the GPA in December of 2008, and we started our actual accession proceedings in the middle of 2012, depositing the instrument of accession in the middle of 2015. It's, I think, important to note that our decision to exceed was largely a commercial decision. Aside from the primary sector, the agriculture, fisheries and forestry, New Zealand's economy and supply market tends to be quite varied and niche. In other words, uh, there's a lot of specialist products and services that New Zealand produces and provides. New Zealand is also very dependent on exporting for our economic success. I think the saying has often been, been made that we cannot get rich, we will not get rich selling to ourselves. We're just a tiny economy. And for us, government markets provide us with a great opportunity to diversify our economy. So with that by way of context, when we started our accession proceedings, um, we had very strong political support for progressing our, our uh, accession um, to the GPA. And that be was because it aligned very closely with the business growth agenda of that particular administration and the desire to um, increase our internationalization, trade and capitalize on exporting opportunities. So government procurement and the government procurement agreement in the WTO was a commercial opportunity for us to capitalize on. I think it was quite critical in reaching that decision that exporter voices were growing stronger and stronger about gaining access to government markets. And at the time, um, the, U the government market of the United States was probably a pretty big consideration in the mix. But we were also very mindful of the fact uh, that there was potential for other large economies to join the GPA and uh, specifically think economies like China, Russia and Brazil, all of which are now I think in, in the frame. Um, timing was important for us. Um, there was some period of time between when we became observers and when we actually launched um, um, accession proceedings where we were simply waiting for the negotiation of the revised agreement to become complete. And as soon as that took place, um, we started the internal processes to commence accession proceedings. There's one other factor that I would like to um, talk about just very briefly, and that is the potential that we saw um, in respect of the evolution of the agreement. In other words, even though the revised agreement had just come into effect, Going forward, we thought if we were a member, we would have a stronger say in how procurement evolved and how procurement practices and the trade impacts of those would um, would evolve going forward so that we would have a voice at the table as and when that happened. So overall, those are the things um, that featured for New Zealand in terms of coming to our decision to launch accession proceedings. And I'll leave it at that and turn it over to my learned colleagues. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen, for sharing your experience. Um, Mr. Shan Yu Chen, you have the floor, please. Uh, thank you, moderator and uh, all the distinguished panelists. Uh, it's my great honor to have this chance to share our experience after the accession to the GPA. When applying for accession to the GPA, we committed to join the agreement on government procurement. In order to commit our uh, accession promise, we submitted the initial offer of market access in March 1995. 
After several rounds of negotiation, we became the 41st member to the GPA on July 15, 2009, and uh, mutually opened the government procurement market with the other uh, with other GPA members. The main consideration that led us to initiate our accession to the GPA is to help our suppliers obtain procurement opportunities benefited from the accession to the GPA. Government procurement account for about 10 to 15 percent uh, of the GDP of an economy on average. So it constitutes a significant market and uh, an important aspect of international trade. Uh, the sign of the GPA uh, secured the maximum advantage for our suppliers and uh, opened up the government procurement market of other countries. It was estimated that other GPA members would open up market worth approximately 390 billion at that time to our suppliers. This is a huge figure and a dozen times larger than the scale of the market that we plan to commit under the GPA each year. Uh, so uh, therefore, it's, it's quite a huge uh, market opportunity for us and for our suppliers. Furthermore, for the suppliers, uh, for the, for the long-term benefit of our government procurement, the participation of excellent foreign suppliers will encourage our suppliers to become more competitive and uh, leverage domestic engineering, te technical and uh, quality standards. So that's our main consideration. Thank you so much. And if we can now move to Ukraine, Oksana, can you please give us uh, some um, considerations that Ukraine took into account when joining the GPA? Yes, thank you very much, Ashtik, for invitation in this event. And I have a pleasure to share with you today the positive experience of Ukraine and the respective lessons learned. Uh, despite the fact that the rules of accession to the WTO GPA are the same for everyone, each country, how we can see, has its own specific experience and past. Uh, Ukraine has been official GPA observer country from 28 and had commenced the formal process to join the GPA in 2012 when the first offer was submitted. In 2014, just after signing the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement, the goal of joining the GPA had become a cornerstone of government's trade policy to diversify Ukrainian export of goods and services to new markets. Accession to this gold club was recognized as a priority of government of Ukraine's overall reform of its domestic public procurement system in order to ensure government procurement as cost-effectively as possible. In this context, joining the GPA was equalized with international commitments to help with internal reforms and to strengthen its competition at the domestic market, improve governance, prevent corruption through increased transparency in public procurement. The achievement of these complex goals envisaged uh, introduction of comprehensive electronic public procurement system Prozora. Ukraine fully completed all negotiations on accession to the GPA in 2015 and same autumn the GPA members approved Ukrainian membership. All formal and legal procedures had been completed in spring 2016 when Ukraine became officially 46 GPA member state. A new addition of national public procurement law entered into force uh, introducing e-procurement system Prozora as only legal way to conduct procurement procedures and award contracts. In February 2016, Ukrainian government also adopted public procurement reform strategy, how we call it, roadmap, which included separate section on the GPA-related matters. 
This is in addition to opening again public procurement market for Ukrainian exporters. The process of accession to the GPA contributed to an incredibly fast harmonization of Ukrainian legislation with international requirements. Undoubtedly, this has become a huge benefit for all stakeholders of this public procurement market of Ukraine. Thank you so much, Oksana, and thank you really everyone for your initial remarks. It seems that uh, the reasons of joining the GPA are largely the same, I would say, and the first and foremost, it's related to the opening up of government procurement markets, mutually opening up of procurement markets um, so that your suppliers can participate to the procurement procedures organized by other GPA parties. So um, now when you're looking back, um, can you say that your exporters were able to make use of the opportunities allowed by the GPA in terms of opening uh, markets, government procurement markets? And do you have any uh, specific example that you can share with us? Thank you so much. I would suggest to take the, the same turn. So New Zealand, please. Uh, thank you, Ashtik. Um, actually, it's a very good question um, to ask because uh, sometimes um, life can get very busy and you don't take a minute to stop and, and look back and reflect on, on the experience. But from New Zealand's perspective, I think um, the our accession process and our experience from um, after accession has been pretty much exactly what we anticipated. The reports that we have from uh, our business community, our exporters have by and large been, been positive. Immediately after uh, we exceeded, we were told about a New Zealand company that had set up its manufacturing in another country so that it could take advantage of a free trade agreement that country had so that it could bid for government contracts internationally. Once we joined the GPA, it moved its operations back to New Zealand, bringing jobs and profits back to our country. So this I point to as a very tangible and important success story, not just for New Zealand, but for the for the GPA. We've had some more recent reports that um, exports have grown both in number and value as a result of our GPA membership. Um, and I remember at a very micro level on one occasion, uh, a situation where a company wanted to uh, submit a bid to a um, to an opportunity, but was told by that contracting authority that they couldn't because they didn't have a trade agreement. And once we intervened and pointed to the fact that we were GPA members, um, the result was was positive. They were then allowed to bid. Unfortunately, I don't know whether they won or not, but uh, I think overall our experience was that GPA membership has delivered benefits, the, the, the benefits that we were we were looking for. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, what about the experience from Chinese Taipei? Thank you. Uh... Yes, our suppliers are able to take advantage of the market access opportunities abroad that GPA accession has provided with. For example, we won some research and medical uh, consultation cases in the USA. Uh, because uh, our supplier, most of our supplier are uh, small and uh, medium enterprises, so they can that they, they may face some challenges like in information collection, unfamiliarity of domestic laws or regulations. Therefore, we established a platform to support our suppliers, providing uh, relevant resources and uh, coaching uh, suppliers to actively strive for business opportunities in order to uh, enhance their competitiveness. So that's our uh, example. 
Thank you so much. And um, Ukraine, what can you tell us about your experience? Thank you, Ashtrik. Uh, I can answer that definitely yes. Expanding the opportunities for Ukrainian exporters to enter international markets can be envisaged as a main goal of Ukrainian succession to the WTO GPA. This is an enormous achievement for Ukraine and we are late than Ukrainian producers have received such opportunity. However, the issue faced by Ukrainian companies in the government procurement markets of the GPA parties are currently solved through several institutions and tools specially created in, the Ukra in Ukrainian for this purpose. And I will happy to share with you these particular positive uh, lessons. Firstly, establishment and successful functioning of the Export Promotion Office, whose activities are focused on supporting Ukrainian exporters in interning foreign markets. The strategic goal of this institution is to help Ukrainian businesses to become successful in, in foreign markets by developing the export competencies uh, of Ukrainian businesses, by promoting Ukrainian goals and services abroad, and by ensuring partnership and cooperation between Ukrainian and foreign businesses. One of the areas of its activities is to support the uh, participation of Ukrainian companies in foreign tenders. Uh, this assistance is provided by informational and analytical support of potential bidders, guidelines and recommendations for both Ukrainian suppliers for foreign tenders and for foreign suppliers in Ukrainian tenders. Another is additional search for tenders for companies in certain markets and solving individual issues faced by Ukrainian bidders in foreign markets. Uh, also, it's a training opportunities, including references to webinars. The advantage of this organization is also the possibility of comprehensive support of potential Ukrainian participants by solving related issues such as certification, customs duties, the possibility of participation in international exhibition and so forth. Uh, another body, the Expo Credit Agency, provides insurance, reinsurance and of Expo Credits, foreign trade agreements of Ukrainian exporters, investments for Ukraine, letters of credit, contractual bank guarantees to ensure reimbursement in case of non-fulfillment by Ukrainian exporter or obligation under loans, foreign buyers obligations under foreign agreements. Uh, in addition to that, that activity, the Expo Credit Agency provides securitization guarantees to creditor banks to reimburse the refinancing of export credit insurance by the Expo Credit Agency, counter guarantees to Ukrainian exporters' banks and tender guarantees. Uh, it should be noted that during second half of 2020, with the support of the European Bank of Forex Instruction and Development, a communication platform GPA in UA was created and integrated with Ukrainian e-procurement system Prozora. It's a really functioning permanent tool that improves the capacity of Ukrainian businesses and serving as some um, information points for foreign supplies in Ukraine. Um, the purpose of this tool is also to increase the awareness of Ukrainian companies that use the Prozora portal about the opportunities for entering the government procurement markets of the GPA members. Uh, also, I am ready uh, to share with you some of the best practice, best examples of 
uh, Ukrainians' uh, participation in foreign bidders. Uh, for example, the Ukrainian company Intelica Consulting won a tender for the supply of data management services to Denmark for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as the most economically advantageous standards. And there were price 30% and quality 70%. The estimated total volume was 1 billion 400,000 euro of the standards. Next success, successful case, uh, the Ukrainian company MIG uh, won a Norwegian tra uh, tender for the supply of occupational clothing, special workwear and accessions for the police. The total amount of this tender was 15 billion 850,000 Norwegian crowns. And the one more uh, uh, successful case, it's Ukrainian supply company Bogdan Motors won a tender for the supply of trolley buses to the Czech Republic. The estimated total volume was 3 billion 100,000 euro. So we can say that the um, uh, a lot of examples uh, that Ukrainian bidders can uh, award it in international uh, tenders and uh, of course the uh, experience in GPA markets, uh, we can say that is successful. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much and it's really encouraging to hear that it seems that all of you have quite positive experience in relation to your suppliers participating and um, while well, winning uh, procurement tenders in different GPA parties. But we already said that the GPA is opening procurement markets mutually, right? So it's not only that your suppliers can participate to the procurement procedures in other GP parties, but it's also that the suppliers from other parties can also uh, enter your own market. And um, sometimes we hear voices that domestic suppliers might be at disadvantage if you will open up your market. So looking at your own experience, um, do you think that your own domestic suppliers were able to meet increased competition from new market entrants uh, from other GPA parties? Or you think that your domestic suppliers found it quite difficult to continue winning GPA covered procurement domestically at home? Um, I would suggest New Zealand to take the floor first. Uh, thank you. Before I answer your question, I'd just like to echo um, some of the initiatives that uh, have been described uh, by my colleagues in terms of supporting our exporters that I I didn't mention before. And just like my colleagues, um, New Zealand has got a trade promotion authority that has responsibilities for supporting exporters. And this support can take um, a, a range of different forms. It might be, uh, well, it used to be trade missions, but um, the, <laughs> there's not so much of that anymore. But the webinars, um, making introductions, or even troubleshooting uh, particular issues. And, and uh, likely Ukraine, uh, we also have an export credit office that provides support, financial support, um, so that certainly in government markets where um, bonds and guarantees and so on are often uh, a requirement, they can help uh, facilitate those things so that um, uh, you know, bidders are able to um, be considered um, for, for foreign government contracts. But the impact on our domestic industry um, is, a, is a very good question. And I will answer by talking about what an unusual market in some ways that New Zealand is. We're a small country, um, about six million people, um, very far from pretty much everywhere in the world, <laughs> except Australia. Um, and in many sectors, um, we actually need and want competition. We welcome it from, um, from foreign suppliers. And that's because we do not have the domestic capability or capacity to deliver all the things that government needs to do its business. 
And for this reason, New Zealand has had an open government market for a long time. In other words, we've we've operated on a non-discriminatory basis. Uh, we don't discriminate on the basis of country of origin, even before we joined the GPA. Contracts have been awarded on the basis of the merit of the of the merit of the of the bid, the quality of the bid. So um, in, in that respect, uh, opening our market to GPA competition really didn't um, have any discernible impact on domestic suppliers because this was already the case even before we joined the, the GPA. That's not to say we don't still get criticisms when contracts are awarded to suppliers overseas, and um, that's, that's something that happens even though we open openly welcome the, the competition. Um, on top of that, um, New Zealand has um, focused on value for money, the best combination, as Oksana described, of quality, delivery and price for quite some time. So again, um, this was no change um, for New Zealand domestic suppliers. And our training programs have focused on upskilling agencies, uh, contracting authorities to conduct their procurement in a robust, um, using good procurement practices. Um, and we try to support domestic suppliers by and making it easier for them to do business with government by standardizing procurement documents and simplifying processes. And I don't think that's unusual. I think many, many countries developed and developing will do exactly that, that sort of thing. Um, I think some of the things in the GPA, like requirements to debrief um, unsuccessful suppliers, has uh, been a good way to build um, capability and competitiveness in our domestic suppliers. And um, I think we also use a wide range of practical resources that are available to suppliers on how to engage with government on, on procurement. And I think that stems from the fact that selling to government is different than selling to um, the private market. Governments use public money and therefore have accountability and obligations that the private sector may not have. So there is, I think, an education process for domestic suppliers uh, to participate in government, whether it's their own or another, a foreign government, to participate successfully in those markets. That's, yeah. that's it Thank from you. me. Thank you. So Thank you. Um, maybe we can hear um, Chinese Taipei's experience with their own domestic suppliers. You have the floor. Thank you. I would like to share the fact of our situation. According to the statistics before and after our accession to the GPA, there is no great difference on the percentage of country value awarded to foreign suppliers. Since most of our domestic suppliers are small and uh, medium enterprises, the GPA covered cases are with high value, originally cannot be provided by domestic suppliers. Uh, for example, like the power plant or railway system. Even if the GPA were not uh, applied, the goods and services involved would still have been procured from foreign suppliers. On the other hand, the foreign supplier who won the big project would like to search domestic suppliers' cooperation. It uh, stimulates technical exchange. That is our uh, experience. Thank you so much. And moving to Ukraine, what is your experience? Thank you very much. Uh, I totally agree with experience and uh, opinion of my colleagues and 
uh, definitely for Ukrainian customers and therefore society and the state from the point of view of the better use of taxpayers' money in general, increasing competition and therefore increasing quality and decreasing, decreasing prices always will be beneficial. External competition stimulates domestic producers to constantly develop and become more efficient. And it's always beneficial for the state to achieve the principle of best value for money. On the other hand, there will always be certain discontent on the part of domestic producers who are not ready or for some reasons cannot raise ability of competitiveness. According to our experience, the only option is to through constant competition between the uh, and communication between the government and local businesses, uh, identification of real problems of low level of competition and jointly funding relevant solutions to tackle them. Today in Ukraine, a lot of work is being done to increase the level of professionalization of bidders and uh, procuring entities, namely professional uh, clarification, uh, the legislative, legislative framework of, for public procurement, education, training, testing, feedback from the market uh, and the stakeholders. In addition, following the best practices and trends Ukraine has implemented the use of non-price criteria. Uh, also, now we are actively on the development environment in terms of the use of green non-price criteria. And that's our experience and we understand that uh, continuing to develop uh, our competition, the competition of our uh, uh, company is uh, necessary uh, even we, in, in GPA or not in GPA if you would like to uh, go and export uh, we have to uh, uh, develop thank you thank you so much Ukraine and I can see New Zealand has a hand up please you can take the floor now uh, thank you it was I just wanted to add something on um, on what others have said. Um, and that is that while um, in New Zealand, while we have foreign competition and we have foreign suppliers that sometimes win the government contracts, there are often some of those spillover effects that have others have mentioned, you know, not just um, technology transfer, but things like um, some of the subcontracts, whether it's not a re necessarily a requirement in the procurement, but for a country that's very far away from other places, if there's a project like the, I think the power plant that was mentioned, um, it is often impractical even for a multinational to come with its entire workforce uh, to, to deliver on the contract. So they may have won the contract, but they would nevertheless hire local people or do or or um, award subcontracts to deliver on the on the on the main contract that they've won from government so even though um, the New Zealand business has not won the big contract it may still benefit from the the contract through other other mechanisms so I just wanted the opportunity to add that to uh, what my colleagues had said. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you all for sharing your quite positive experience with the GPA as a trade liberalization tool, as a market opener opening tool. But we are also talking about GPA as a good governance tool, um, as a set of international best practices. So if you are looking at your own experience, do you think that GPA helped your economies to achieve greater value for money or other targets related to good governance? And if this is the case, can you bring any specific examples? Um, Karen, I know you just had the floor, but maybe you can um, <laughs> go for this as well. Thank you. I'm not trying to um, 
dominate the conversation, <laughs> but uh, sometimes I just like to sh to share my thoughts when they they come. Uh, on this question, I'd have to say that uh, in New Zealand we've operated again a domestic regime for quite a number of years, where contract award decisions have been based on value for money. So GPA accession in its in and of itself has not been a major factor in achieving greater value for money. That said, I would note that the fundamental principles underpinning the GPA, open, non-discriminatory, competitive procurement, are what I call touchstones, which are key points that we come back to over and over again as we uh, make and evolve our procurement policies and practices. So on that basis, there's certainly been value um, from, from the GPA that we draw into our domestic regime. I would also like to add that the evolution of government procurement policy and practice in New Zealand is continuous. So we continually look at and consider how to achieve greater value for money. Now we're talking about something we call public value. So it's not just about the goods and services, but the other outcomes that you can achieve through procurement. So this includes, and I think um, the Ukraine mentioned green procurement, but for us it includes thinking about how to address through procurement some of the most challenging problems of our time. Things like climate change, technology disruption, and I count myself here, an aging workforce. Um, you know, it won't be too long that we're all um, needing and looking to uh, a different demographic profile worldwide. These are issues that we're just starting to discuss uh, through the GPA work programs and the information sharing initiatives. And I certainly want to see more discussion of these really important um, important issues around the world that aren't unique to any particular country or any particular GPA party. So um, I'd have to I'll close with saying that when we joined the GPA, we made a commitment that we would participate actively in all of the activities. The bilateral engagement with our GPA colleagues, the, the work programs in the GPA and the discussions that we have with exceeding economies on their procurement approaches and practices have all been very valuable for learning about the different ways of undertaking what I call GPA compliant procurement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Moving to Chinese Taipei, please. Firstly, I would like to echo Karen, uh, what Karen said, uh, like uh, green procurement and so-called uh, social procurement right now is a very important topic and uh, in the working program uh, in GPA discussed. And um, on the other way, uh, in our in our uh, about our experience, the GPA does help our government build an open, transparent and non-discriminatory procurement system and uh, optimize competition among suppliers so as to avoid corruption and achieve uh, greater value for money. For example, the percentage of cases providing e-tender documentation was more than 99%. Suppliers may download uh, e-tender documentation from our website. On average, each tender is downloaded by four suppliers. Furthermore, the proportion of using the open tendering procedure has maintained over 80% on average um, for at least recent five years. Uh, the other evidence like the, uh, according to the GPA, uh, the lowest tender and the, the most advantaged tenders are both permissible uh, country awarding methods. We encourage entities uh, conducting procurement should consider the characteristics of each case to choose an appropriate awarding method. No matter how, contract, uh, how a contract is awarded, 
uh, the contract inspection, uh, inspection and uh, acceptance should be implemented faithfully. So the quality of project should not differ due to awarding method. So that is uh, our experience to achieve greater value for money. Thank you so much. And last but definitely not least, Ukraine. Um, Oksana, what can you say about this question? Thank you very much. Uh, and my reply goes maybe to previous response regarding question on increasing competition among GPA members. The increased level of competition directly multiply quality and helps price optimization, which means it's beneficial for customers. That is, in the case of public procurement, strongly beneficial for the whole population and state. Next important point is significant growth of export opportunities and therefore foreign currency income through foreign government procurement transactions. In addition, it also stimulates Ukrainian local manufacturers to improve the quality of their goods uh, respectfully to optimize and improve business processes. As for other benefits for the government, they are obvious, uh, as I have already said, thanks to the inter uh, integration processes into the international public procurement community, Ukraine brought its legis legislation in line with international uh, requirements and best practices in, uh, in precedental time frame. Also, I would like uh, to echo my colleagues about uh, some special, maybe some special benefits uh, that Ukraine uh, can see uh, during the GPA uh, memberships. It's um, within the framework of the GPA committee, there are currently three such uh, work program, have said, uh, Karen work program on collection and reporting of statistical data, work program on SMEs and work program on sustainable procurement. This enables the GPA members to jointly discuss, share experiences and seek solutions to the most uh, pressing issues in these areas. As the date within the framework of this, this work program program, a huge amount of work has been done to collect the experience of the GPA parties. The last major achievement was the analysis of practices to support SMEs in procurement during uh, COVID pandemic. Besides the core idea of the GPA to remove trade barriers at global public procurement market should be implemented not only via unified legislative framework, but also we are well structured and organized system of statistical monitoring of procurement operations of countries covered by the GPA. Uh, the work program on statistics, for example, was established in part because the GPA parties recognized the importance of providing transparency both to pub, uh, procurement covered under the agreement and uh, to the different methodologies in the collection of statistics. Uh, since 2019, Ukraine has been leading the work in this work program and now uh, Ukrainian party with the GPA colleagues are moving forward with the, with the work of this program in direction of study and generalization of different methodologies in statistics collection. It's important to know about each other more in terms of approach to data collection. Thank you so much, uh, Ukraine. Um, and thanks all of you really for very comprehensive and really interesting observations related to your own experience. But I think um, I already mentioned that one of the main ideas for our panel discussion is also to benefit the W2 members that are currently considering to join the GPA. Um, so what do you think, what are the lessons learned from your side and what advice can you give to the uh, WTO members that are already maybe in the process or are still deciding whether they want to join the GPA. New Zealand, what can you what can you say in this regard? 
Uh, thank you. I think this is probably one of the most difficult questions to answer because every um, country will have its own experience and its own considerations. I think uh, everyone can tell from the comments that I've made so far uh, today that New Zealand has certainly been very committed, firmly committed to the value of GPA membership, both uh, for the commercial opportunities that are available and for informing a procurement policy and practice and the engagement that we have with like-minded um, countries from around the world. If I were to reflect on our experience, I think key success factors for us included being very clear about the reasons for wanting to join and what we expected to get from it. I think um, preparing well for accession. In other words, before uh, we made the decision to join, we um, spent uh, some years being observers and closely looking at things like the minutes of meetings to see what um, what was happening there. It wasn't practical to travel for a day's meeting to participate in the committee meetings, but we certainly kept um, a, a strong watching brief on uh, that so that we were well prepared and not caught by surprise. And I think lastly, um, you get from something as much as you put in. So coming back to that, um, that idea that when we made the decision to join, we at the same time committed ourselves to participating actively so that we would get the most out of our accession. Thank you. That's yes, New Zealand's thank perspective. Thank you so much. Uh, really relevant and interesting. And um, what about Chinese Taipei? Do you have the same experience? Would you would you have the same advice? Uh, I would like to share our special lesson. Uh, based on our experience, the accession to the GPA has a positive influence on our nego uh, negotiation for other international government procurement agreements. After becoming a member of the GPA in 2009, we then successfully signed bilateral uh, trade agreement with New Zealand and Singapore, respectively in 2000. 13 and 2014, increasing our engagement with uh, the international economy. The accession is a stepping uh, stone for us to connect the global market. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, Ukraine, the lessons learned from your side. Thank you, Artric. Uh, the experience of Ukraine's succession to the GPA is clearly positive. Expanding, expanding export opportunities always brings benefit to the economy. Moreover, gaining access to the closed market of country with the most developed economies, the ability to compete uh, in them and win tender. This is also a challenge. The need to constantly work on the competitiveness of goods and services, improving the mechanism of foreign economic activity, being trained of supplies demand. We can conclude that also joining the, this agreement requires certain efforts and actions. It undoubtedly brings uh, significant and unique benefits for its members. The main advice that should probably be given is joining the GPA uh, for the countries who would like to do it. This is a unique opportunity, both from the point of view of bringing the internal rules of public procurement to international standards and opening up a huge market for your economic uh, operators. Thank you. 
Thanks a lot. Thank you um, really for being available and for sharing your experience with a wider audience. And before giving you the floor for some really concise closing remarks, we received a question from the audience and we are still living in the um, in pandemic and it affects really different parts of our lives, including government procurement. So a colleague from Cameroon was wondering whether you think that the GPA has unduly constrained your flexibility to buy uh, really urgently needed uh, equipment, supplies, uh, products, goods, um, and that are actually necessary to respond to these unprecedented times. So um, New Zealand, please. Uh, thank you again. Um, when COVID-19 um, hit, the world. I think in some ways New Zealand thought we're very well prepared. We've had emergencies again and again in the nature of earthquakes. So in some ways those earthquakes prepared us well for dealing with emergencies. And by that I mean that we had well developed policies and guidance on how to do emergency procurement which is a recognized um, uh, way of dealing with, um, uh, it, it's recognized in the uh, GPA that you can um, uh, use different processes in emergency situations. So we exercised the flexibilities that are available under that provision in the, in the GPA. And because we already had good, strong policy guidance on how to conduct procurement in emergency situations. I think we were reasonably well prepared for doing the same under, under COVID-19. Our, our guidance um, really didn't need any particular updating or change. It was fully aligned with, with what's allowed in the GPA and provided good information on how you can uh, operate in those situations and still maintain integrity um, and get value for money, even though you haven't got the transparency that you would have from open competition. We're also very well aware that the GPA specifically provides um, for countries to take measures uh, that are necessary to protect human health. And I think if anything, COVID-19 is clearly a case where you can do what you need to do to protect uh, the health of your population. So um, the simple, I guess, short answer to, um, to the question is that we certainly didn't feel constrained at all um, by um, being GPA members. Thank, Thank you, you so much. That's encouraging to hear. Chinese Taipei, please. I'm sorry, we are muted. Sorry, uh, we didn't uh, think uh, and feel the pandemic. During a pandemic, the GPA constrained our flexibility. Uh, like uh, in GPA, there are some emergency uh, methods or measures that, uh, for example, like the time period when you meet a emergency situation, then you can shorten the time period and others measures can help us to face such emergency situation. So um, on the other hand, like the Article 3 is a general exception. When you face uh, it is necessary for human life, then there is a general excep exception you can use. So we don't think on uh, the GPA on duly constrain our flexibility uh, to conduct emergency procurement. Thank you so much. And uh, Ukraine, please, your experience with COVID procurement. Thank you very much. Um, I'm also uh, can say that not in March 2020, Ukraine, like many other countries, adopted relevant legal regulation in public procurement in response to the pandemic. 
it was established that the law of Ukraine on public procurement doesn't apply to cases where the subject of procurement is supplies, work or services necessary for taking measures aimed to prevent occurrence and spread, localize and liquidate the outbreak epidemics and the pandemic of the coronavirus disease within the Ukraine. Uh, so our experience that I, uh, we cannot say that uh, GPA uh, constrained our flexibility to conduct emergency government procurement in Ukraine, for example. Well, thank you so much. And it's really great to hear that it seemed that GPA hasn't been um, an impediment to emergency procurement when it's necessary. And clearly, as uh, Karen already mentioned, um, I think COVID is a, is a situation of emergency that hit the world. Um, and unfortunately, uh, really unfortunately, because this is a super interesting discussion, but the time is coming to an end. And I would like to give you the floor for one last time for your final remarks. Um, what would be the, the, the sentence that you would like our, our audience to take away with them from today's discussion? Uh, New Zealand. OK, very, very quickly um, from our perspective, the GPA is an opportunity, not a threat. Even a small country like New Zealand, a small economy can have a voice on a world stage. And if uh, a country is at all considering it, jump in, embrace it. Uh, even in these uncertain times, you'll never regret it. Thank you. Thank you. Any Taipei? Um, the GPA ensures open, fair and transparent conditions of competition in the government procurement market and provides increased access to the global market. However, during the accession process, we may face complex uh, negotiations, legal reforms, uh, voice from domestic suppliers. Uh, we still can find the best solutions, not only through study and uh, communication, but also support from members and the WTO secretariat and GPA committee. So uh, for our experience, joining uh, the GPA is very positive. Thank you. And Ukraine, please. Thank you very much. I totally agree with my colleagues and just only want to emphasize that the Ukrainian party always remains and open to candidate countries and it's ready to work in close cooperation of the process of their accession. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And um, I would really like to thank all of you, our distinguished panelists, for your time, availability, readiness to share your own experience with wider audience. And we do hope that this discussion uh, was interesting and useful for our viewers. Um, thank you so much. All of the good luck and goodbye. 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 Bye.